Hello folks and welcome to The Lone Adventurer. I'm not actually going to be playing a game in this video. Most of my videos tend to be playthroughs. I'm just going to sort of show you a bunch of stuff. I do some, uh, uh, I do a lot of printing of bits and pieces at home, but every now and then I want to have something slightly nicer printed and often it's easier to send things off to a printing company. And that's what I've done here. I've sent a bunch of stuff off to a printing company for various uh, RPGs, uh, solo games and RPG resources that I've had my eye on. And I've gradually built up a bit of a backlog of bits and pieces that I want to print until the time that I can print enough that I get free postage and packaging. And that's what I've done here. So I'm going to talk you through what I've got here and uh, just show you some cool stuff, some of which you might be seeing on the channel, some of which I might be just playing around with on my own, and some of which I might never use, but they're all things that I fancied having, so now I've got them. Right, let's start off with this one here. This is the Black Hack. And this is an RPG system, an old school revival style system uh, that is, to my understanding, based upon the white hack, which is uh, has its lineage in the earliest role playing games, uh, sort of a, an adaptation of the first edition of um, Dungeons and Dragons. I might be wrong about that. Feel free to correct me if I am. So what this is, is a very sort of straightforward, simple role-playing game with all the rules that you need in one little book. So we've got yeah all, all your basic rules for uh, role-playing. And my, my hope is I really want to do some solo role-playing, some pure solo role-playing, i.e. using uh, a role-playing game that's created for group play and creating some kind of gaming experience uh, on my own using it. And this feels like it might be the one. If I don't end up getting Iron Sworn, and you'll see in a minute, I've also got a, a resource for Iron Sworn. I don't have Iron Sworn yet. I've downloaded the PDF because it's free, but I don't have uh, physical copies of that yet. But if it's not going to be Iron Sworn, it's probably going to be this because everything is here in this little book. and the rules feel interesting enough and and uh, all encompassing enough to um, provide enough of a framework whilst uh, not being overly complicated. And the book looks lovely. It's got some lovely illustrations in it. Got rules for players here, a little bit of uh, magic. So we've got character creation here. We've got, um, for each character, we've got the basic stats page with a nice illustration. And then some other interesting things. So some suggested equipment for them, a couple of uh, special uh, abilities by the looks of things. What happens when you gain a new level? So we've got the warrior, the thief, Cleric, the wizard, and then we've got a couple of pages, well, like one page of spells, one page of prayers, and then that's your lot, oh, and then the blank one there. Okay, then we're going into rules for the GM, uh, and then we get into some of the things that I didn't realise was in here when I uh, bought it on uh, drive through RPG, there's an awful lot of tables in here. And now that I think about it, I do recall Geek Gamer talking about how there's a lot in here that lends it to solo play. We've got random encounters. Roll a dice, roll a one, roll on the creature table. Roll on a creature table. Okay, so you pick one or randomly select one using a dice and then you might end up with a Cyclopean Guardian or two spawns of Shog Nagosh. So 
some kind of demon, I guess. So th there's lots of random tables in here so that uh, if you're playing solo, you can quickly roll up things that you might need. Uh, Roars for hirelings and retainers, panic and light, diseases, narcotics and poisons, drugs. In okay, case so we've got some different, a few different types of drugs here outlined. Finding new spells, spell side effects. We've got a D100 table here. So you could roll, you could roll D100 dice and get 85. And you would have a magical side effect of arms become like a T-Rex's. That could have some interesting repercussions. You've got some wizard names here, so you've got a few uh, suggested names. There's an awful lot of tables. You've got some NPC generating tables, NPC appearances, some story hooks. How NPCs are related. So roll a d4, a d6, a d10, a d8 and a d12 and you would immediately get how an NPC is related to one of your characters, I guess. So, oh, they're childhood friends. Uh, this uh, NPC is estranged and bitter. They, they were, they're also sporting team members on the same sport team. Um, their intention, the NPC's intention, is to discredit the work of one of the characters. Seems a bit harsh, given that we're childhood friends. Um, so, so many ideas. Um, D100 table again here for NPC activities. What is the NPC doing? 31. 31 paramilitary reconnaissance. Something to do, I suppose. So there you go. You can use that. What's on the corpse? Drop one D6 for each HD the creature has. What's HD stand for? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So you just drop a D6 on here. And it tells you what, what's found on the corpse. Okay, so there we go. They've got an, uh, an empty velvet purse. Something like that. Overland Adventures. So, uh, and, and then you've got some hex terrain generation rules. And you've got an example uh, hex map there, which is quite clearly... I say quite clearly. I'm fairly sure it's a skull fungus map. By the artist Skull Fungus. Yeah, so that's cool. And then a blank hex map, settlement generation, tavern generation, quest hook generator. That's pretty cool. Look at all these little illustrations, aren't they awesome? Um, tips for running underworld adventures. And then you've got some dungeon generation, inhabitants of the dungeon. Entrance generator. Um, so there's so there's so many tables. It's just awesome. Like the majority of this book, it feels, is uh, tables and and monsters, as you'll see in a second. And then we are into monsters. Um, and not only do they give you uh, sort of the stats of the monster. HD is obviously important. That's all over the place here. Hit dice what it stands for, hit dice. So it gives you the hit dice, strength, damage that they do, any additional rules uh, related to that monster. Um, but there's also little tables tucked away in here. So you've got things you might find on a demon, demon names, and then roll a little d6, what are the demons doing? They are enacting a dark ceremony with a writhing brass key, or a dagger that weeps black oil. All right, so just loads and loads and loads of ideas. All right, so I think I'll stop talking about that now. That is Black Hack. Looks really awesome. Next up on the list, you might remember me playing a game called Blood Castle in a previous video. I'll put a link up in the corner of the screen. Well, I've gone and got the two sequels in a slightly more sensible sized booklet, Catacomb of Chaos and the Den of Goblins. 
once I've finished playing through my Dungeon Blitz game, which I, for my sins, have not yet done, I can then move that character on to a new location and a new adventure. So each of these booklets contains all of the core rules, which are very brief. I don't know if there are any specific rules to the Den of Goblins and the Catacomb of Chaos. I haven't looked into it yet. But you've got uh, some background for this particular adventure. You've got some uh, stuff that happens in the nearby landscape as you're approaching the location. And then you've got your main exploration table with all of the different chambers and rooms that you can go in and what happens in them and what you find in them. And if you've seen my video, you'll know that each of these you will encounter once. And when you've been into that room, you tick it off and you don't go back in there. And uh, you gradually work your way through until such time that the end of the game is triggered. And then you have a final encounter. So we've got some different monsters here, each with different abilities. We've got a treasure table unique to this adventure and a special treasure table. There's some cool stuff there. And then you've got your final encounter, uh, how you level up a little bit and things that happen, things that might happen on the road between this adventure and the next one. So there you go, a bit more brief. That is the next two books in the Dungeon Blitz series. To my knowledge, there's only three at the moment, but it would be very cool if those continued because I do like them quite a bit. Next up, we've got Grok, which is a uh, another um, sort of old school revival rules light role playing game. This is one that I backed on Kickstarter last year. I just backed the print and play or the, the, the PDF version, and now I've gone and got this printed out, and I think it looks rather nice. This is probably the one that I'm most pleased with from this little printing um, session. So I'll read out the little description on the back. Grok was once a haven for trans-dimensional migrants and a bastion of advanced technology, until a cataclysm rendered it a desolate, hollow planet. Now, feral monstrosities haunt its chasms, cities float among the clouds, and a derelict space station encapsulates the planet and bathes the world in perpetual phosphorescent radiation. Yet a new era of enlightenment is dawning, civilizations grow from the ashes, relics of immense power await those who would learn their lost secrets, and threats of caste warfare loom as leaders vie for power, all the while while creeping black nothingness peers up through the hollow of the world. Sounds like a unique sort of setting to me. That's kind of what drew me in along with the artwork and the fact that it was quite cheap. So we've got rules for the players, rules for the uh, games master, that they call the director in here. And then we've got some pages at the end, not many admittedly, but a few pages at the end that detail something about the world in which it is set. So I don't know how easy this is going to be to use in a sort of solo context, especially given how lacking in confidence I am when uh, trying to play solo role-playing games that don't provide some kind of structure, uh, some sort of game, gamey structure, uh, you know, what you do in a turn, how you progress from one stage to a next, to the next. So I don't know how easy it's going to be, but I, I just like having this thing, quite frankly. We've got some awesome artwork in here. Who is this by? The uh, game itself was created by Lester Burton. Um, artwork is by uh, Matthias Vero, also known as Doodle Skelly, and it is pretty awesome. So rules here for the uh, players, which goes into a moderate amount of detail, but, but it is um, not too much. And then we've got some tables here with some very tiny writing. 
So character creation, so we've got attributes, and then we've got to uh, write a word or phrase for each trait and roll on the table below. Okay, not sure entirely how this works, but there's obviously some opportunities here for variation and adding interesting detail to characters. Love the fact that we've included these crazy splash pages of uh, not so art. Then we've got rules for the director, and I haven't had an opportunity to read any of this at all. Ah, scenarios. So some rules for scenario creation that could be handy. Hostile DCs. What's DC? Is that like a non-playing character of some kind? A gaunt insectoid who has rapid regrowth and its motivation is extermination. So there you go, you can quite quickly create a sort of an interesting, uh, threatening uh, character to oppose the um, characters that you're playing with. And then finally, we've got details about the planet. And you've got some other little D20 tables here to generate, uh, I guess, locations? An abandoned spaceport with gold paint on everything when rumours of serial murders. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So you can quickly sort of roll up some ideas there. Um, and then you've got the different areas and some uh, tables to generate uh, what you might find in those areas. Okay, so th there is some stuff in there. It does look kind of cool. And then you've got a quick start guide at the end. So that is Grok. That looks pretty awesome. So two more things. The first is this quest front um, uh, uh, zine, I guess it is. And this is seven adventure starters powered by Iron Sworn. So I don't have Iron Sworn. I, well, I've got the PDF, as I said, and I have read through it, um, but I found it a little intimidating. And this provides um, some adventures that you can uh, do. But it also gives you some sort of rules uh, to structure those adventures for taking on rules for taking on a quest, um, reaching milestones in that quest. This is all based upon the Iron Sworn uh, uh, game. So I don't really know how any of this works, but milestones of a threat. Undertaking an expedition. So, I mean, this is just, it's all more structure, explanations about how you can use these little adventures. Introducing foes, answering questions. So I think we've got some additional oracles in here that can be used. So an oracle is like a table that you can roll on to generate ideas when you come across a situation where a games master would ordinarily make a decision for you about what uh, the the other characters are doing or what the enemies that you're encountering are doing or what is just generally happening in the world that is beyond the control of your characters. So we've got some oracles in here and I do believe there's some oracles in Iron Sworn but uh, this is, um, let's make sure and see. So we've got oracles for action. Use this oracle to inspire a discovery, event, character goal, or situation. So um, you're saying if, if you are in a particular context and you need an event to happen, you would roll D100 to get an action and a subject and then you have to sort of try and interpret those given the context that you're in. So I have tried to do a little bit of play, play with um, using an oracle of this nature and I found it quite challenging but um, you know hopefully I will uh, get better. And then you've got the actual adventures themselves. So you've got a little introduction a vow and a rank, so these are uh, related to Iron Sworn things. You've got the threat in this particular adventure, some threat milestones that would sort of uh, guide uh, particular um, the, the story beats that you would need to sort of hit to keep the adventure moving forward. What happens if you fail? Key characters, key sites, 
and some questions that you can sort of ask yourself in order to flesh it out a little bit. Deserter. Is that a character that you can play in this adventure? Or a character you encounter in the adventure? Got another one here. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, they look really cool. Um, and my hope is that I'd be able to use one of these to sort of kickstart some play and have a bit of additional structure um, to make it a little bit easier to get going. So that is quest fronts. And the final thing that I've got is glide. And this is something that's a little bit more in my wheelhouse. This is a solo um, sci-fi RPG that can also be played cooperatively. And I was quite keen on this one. And so I've already read the rule book a couple of times and I'm sort of ready to give it a go. And I have annoyingly um, printed things on the wrong side. So this should be over here. And then this should be round the other side. And that is more apparent on pages that have a splash image like this. That, those should be opposite each other so you can see the whole image. So that's going to bug me, but you know, such is life. So it's a solo RPG um, set on a distant planet. A long time ago, the green lushness of Eridor stood as the prize jewel to many great houses. These houses form the Council of Empires, a ruling system over the known universe. Each house rules over their own people to forward their own agenda power and control and take from all planets they choose, returning nothing to the soils. Over many centuries of exploitation from the great houses, Eridor began to dry up, becoming a barren and sandy husk of its once beautiful self. Conflict erupted, subtle and shadowed at first, then quickly open and violent across the planet and in the space above. The great houses fought for one resource in particular, a precious mineral, with a latent power to transform any planet of their choosing into a verdant, life-giving world. When the last of the known mineral was finally harvested, the surviving houses began leaving the now completely barren planet in exchange for returning to their home worlds with the newfound ability to create something from nothing. Sadly, Eridor saw no such nicety. You are a new member of the Seekers, a collective group of nomads, traders, ecological experts and hopefuls that have come together with the common goal of rebuilding Eridor. Seekers scrap what has been left behind from the great houses in hopes that they can one day begin restoring the planet to its past beauty and splendour. There may yet be something recovered from the sands, as the shroud can be lifted if you know where to look. Welcome to Eridor. So this is a game much like... <laughs> this one which I'll be doing a video for very soon, Notorious. It's science fiction, it's sort of creating a universe and fleshing out a law and a background in quite brief a sort of tome. So in this little book, we've got sort of a whole world and all of the ideas and all of the events and people that take place in that world. We've got a list of different guild houses and then obviously we've got some rules for creating your character, character backgrounds, items and resources, uh, rules about the different skill tests that you might do, and then how you get started. So how you start, how you create a start location and an introduction event that gets everything started. And this game is based upon uh, drawing from a traditional pack of cards. So you draw a card and then you act accordingly. So a red suit or a black suit can create a different type of introduction event. 
and then you uh, operate over a series of rounds and turns, uh, maybe encountering a settlement and doing a, a, a hex crawl. So uh, overland hex exploration is what this game centers about. So there's rules about how you move through the world, what happens when you reveal a new location, you draw a card, you get a particular type of location and it will either be one that you can't go through or one that is explorable or one that is a settlement. So you uh, build up the world gradually, exploring. And then you've got a table of different types of location here and what could happen there. And I guess the hope is that you've got a sufficient range of locations and things that can happen in that location that you sort of avoid too much repetition and you end up sort of discovering a new world gradually and building it up around you. So we've got different desert explorations here, annoyingly, not on the same page. Um, uh, things that can happen while you're camping, uh, different weather situations that might happen. So you're rolling on these tables, um, equipment that you can purchase. You have a glider as your vehicle. So you've got different upgrades you can do to your glider. Encounters you could have in a settlement. This looks super cool. If I didn't have Notorious ready to go, this is what I would be doing next. Companions that you can uh, encounter and take along with you. And then you've got quests. Maybe I should stop there. Um, but yeah, you've got different uh, quests that you can do. Oh, that is, is super cool. And then I've got this little supplement as well, um, which adds uh, the concept of smugglers and smuggling and different rules uh, surrounding that. So you've got different quests and different encounters if you choose to be a smuggler, I guess. Uh, so yeah, that is Glide, a game that I am very much looking forward to playing. Right, that video was a lot longer than I intended it to be, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you saw a few bits and pieces that um, might be of interest to you. The fact is, living in the UK, I do find that so much of the uh, content that I'm interested in is published in America. Like Glide, for example, I, I got this through Kickstarter. You can get it on itch.io now, um, and I think you can get it through uh, Drive Through RPG, but I don't think you can print it through Drive Through RPG. Um, yeah, uh, so many, so many of these things are American produced, America produced, that uh, it means it's prohibitively expensive for me to get uh, physical physical copies shipped to me. So much as I would love to have the physical proper copy of Glide, that wasn't really an option. So uh, yeah, printing stuff yourself, either at home or using a printing company is often a good alternative. And you know, all these things that I've shown you today are things that I paid for, paid the uh, the creators, um, money either through Kickstarter or through drive through RPG primarily um, or maybe itch.io um, so uh, I feel like I've, I've done a decent thing and, and paid them and got some uh, cool resources to show for it all right I think I'll leave it there thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one bye bye